Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painted channel and in this video I'm going to be painting Mr. X. Mr. X is a uh, tyrant, uh, so he is T00 from the Resident Evil 2 board game. He's also one of the main bad guys in the Resident Evil uh, video game and he is a really really nasty piece of work he's a really big heavy heavy duty guy he bursts through walls he's a real nuisance um, and he's actually quite frightening in game as well um, so yeah hopefully we're gonna uh, paint this guy to look quite similar to the video games we're gonna do a little bit of a mixture between sort of the new game and the old game together and um, we're gonna start out by painting his skin using a base coat of sky gray from Vallejo and the reason why I'm gonna use these sorts of colors we're gonna paint his skin into like a really sort of rotten flesh so this is going to make him look uh, quite a lot like the uh, the sort of character and um, we're going to try and build this sort of character up as much as we can by painting him in a similar sort of fashion so once the skin is dry which i've done over his hands and his face and head i'm then going to use a tenebrous gray to paint over the rest of the body so i'm going to cover all of the boots i'm going to cover the cloak and all different things like that if you don't use a tenebrous gray um, as you'll know with my videos i tend to enjoy using this color it takes to the miniature really really nicely uh, you can just use a normal plain flat black if you like the vallejo black is a fantastic color for this because it also dries down to a very nice matte finish just the same as this color will as well um, but we're going to build this color up slightly different a little bit later once that is dry, we're going to use one of my favorite colors. So we're going to use a Dark Rust 302 from Vallejo. I'm just going to paint his little pouch and the belt using this color. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want. You can keep this all black and keep it very, very similar to the video game. Uh, literally, I'm just painting this a slightly different color just to give your eye something a little more to look at than just a monotone sort of black color. Um, and we're going to do that quite a bit with a few of the areas on this model. We're going to paint a few slight slight different colors just to kind of break up that monotone sort of uh, black and white kind of um, effect that you kind of get out of the base color here once that's done we are going to paint then using gunmetal just across the uh, areas of the boots because on his boots he's got quite a few different metal straps and uh, the steel toe caps he also has these metal um, sort of uh, knuckle dusters if you like just going down the front and around his fingers and I'm also going to use the uh, the silver as well, just to paint these two little sort of um, little points across his arms and just down uh, the the jacket here. As you can see, I'm just picking out uh, the detail point. Now this is quite a difficult area to paint, so if you make a little bit of a mistake just around the cuffs or down the arms, you can switch back to that black or that tenebrous grey and fix that back up. And this is why we're going to do this before we apply the wash and the colour that we're going to use over the top. Uh, because it is something that is quite easy to fix. I'm also just going to paint the buttons and of course the uh, belt buckles and things like that as well just to get a little bit of a shine and again just to break your eye, uh, to, to pull your eye towards it from that monotone colour. Now what I'm going to do with this model is I'm going to use a Drakenhof Nightshade. Now this is a blue wash so instead of using a dark brown or a black wash or anything like that we're going to use a dark blue wash and this is going to add to that texture and add to that tone purely because what we're going to do with this, this will dry down with a slight blue subtle um, hint to it. Um, but it's also something that we can build back up from so when we build in the face up It's going to give the head and the skin sort of a, a cool sort of temperature Which is going to be great for that sort of rotten kind of flesh um, But it's also going to add a small subtle sort of blue color and blue tone to the cloak as well Which we'll build up on a little bit later So once that's done, we're going to go back to the base color of sky gray You can see the effect that that um, that blue Drakenhof nightshade has had now on the skin. You can see where this sort of blue tone is kind of creating that, that sort of dead, rotten looking, uh, looking kind of skin tone. And you can see sort of where all of those details are starting to pick out on the uh, the face. You can see sort of the nose and all of the, uh, the frown and bits like that as well, which is great. So we're gonna use the sky gray, the base color, and we're just gonna build this color back up. So we're gonna use this one first, and we're just gonna use this to paint and pick out all of those details around the face, the cheekbones, at the chin, the nose, all of those different things. And when we come across the head, what I'm actually gonna do with the head is I'm gonna apply quite a few uh, layers of stippling. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is we're gonna build up a really cool sort of like texture, but without having to do too much work. 
So once you've done the sky gray, we're gonna use the sky gray, but we're also gonna mix a silver gray into this as well. So I'm using half and half, so 50% of each, one blob of each paint. And as you can see, now I'm using the stippling technique. And the reason why I'm using that, as I said earlier, is this is gonna build a texture. So as we stipple across the head and we stipple this technique and we stipple these paints and these highlights across the head, we're gonna leave some of the area underneath showing through, and this is gonna create that sort of, um, like I say, that kind of rotten tone, that kind of rotten texture and the things across the head as well, which is going to be fantastic. This is how we're gonna build up that color and that, that kind of vibrancy and that overall texture across the, uh, the, the sort of um, top and sides and back of his head as well. I'm also going to be using the very, very tip of the brush as well, just to pick out the nose, the knuckles, the chin, things like that as well, just to build that vibrancy and to get that colour showing through as much as possible. Also, not forgetting the hands, so the fingers just around the back here, as you can see the thumb and fingers that are all curled around the back. Now once that bit is dry, we're going to use just the silver grey on its own, and we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to add a stippling technique all across the head, and then we're going to use the very tip of the brush as well to pick out all of the details around the nose, the chin, the eyebrows, and things like that, as you can see. This is a really cool sort of technique into building this vibrant kind of rotten skin because that blue tone is creating the original sort of um, temperature and, and texture. And then as we build this up, what we're essentially doing is building that vibrancy right up to the top of the head. We're kind of giving us an idea as to where the light is catching across the top of the head as well. And it's just making this uh, character and this, this model look all the more menacing and all the more sort of um, nasty, if you like. Now once that's done, I'm going to use an off-white. Now you could just go to straight white if you wanted, but I'm using a slightly different one, so I'm just using the off-white here instead. Um, and that is purely just to kind of make it a little bit different so that it doesn't go too extreme to the highlight, just straight up to white. And again, stippling that just across the top and then picking out some of the details across the chin and across the cheekbones and things like that, where I think the light is going to catch on the model. Once that is done, we are going to then move on and do something completely different. So I'm going to use a Riley Gray from uh, Scale 75. And this is a cool sort of blue grayish color. But as you can see, I'm also using Flow Improver with this. So I'm going to use quite a lot of the Flow Improver to create this into a glaze. Um, and if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll kind of know what that means with the glaze. And you'll see sort of the, the textures and tones that I'm using for the glazing. And pretty much with the glaze, that's all you're doing is you're using a lot of water or a lot of the Flow Improver to really thin down your colour so that you can apply this uh, onto the model. But it, as it dries down then, it dries down in a much more subtle colour so you don't end up with this really vibrant sort of um, texture and you don't end up with too much um, but like sort of paint brush strokes and things like that. This blends lovely into the model. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm using uh, three parts of the flow improver to one part paint. So that's three drops of flow improver to one part paint. And the scale 75 paints are really good because they're already quite thin. They're really good to thin down for this kind of painting technique. So by using that flow improver as well, this is just allowing me to control how much um, I want this, uh, how, how thin I want this paint to be so that I can paint on the cloak. And that's all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint around all of those creases and all of those folds, leaving some of the original color and the original texture underneath. The cool thing with using a glazing technique as well is you can apply multiple layers to build the vibrancy in different areas. So as an example, just on the leg here where we can see the knee area, of the model. If you built up two or three layers on that, you would get more vibrancy and more colour through that area at naturally without doing too much work. So I'm going to move on to the pouch and I'm going to use an Occam Copper. Again, sticking with this Scale 75. I've got a few new paints, so I'm just going to try these out. If you want to and you've seen a lot of the different videos that I paint uh, leathers and I'm painting all different browns and things like that, you're more than welcome to follow those instead. But again, I just wanted to try and paint something just a little bit different, just to give you guys a little bit of a different colour scheme. And also with this little pouch as well, just giving you something to break up that monotone sort of style. So we're just going to use this, um, this Occam uh, Copper colour as a base colour just to build up uh, a little bit of a sort of uh, light leather pouch so this is just going to be a little bit of a lighter brown leather rather than a strong leather 
Now, if you want to, you can also apply this to the belt. I'm not really going to do too much of that. So instead, I'm just going to use this mostly on the pouch. Then we're going to move on to peanut butter. And this is a great color purely because I love the name of it. It actually does look like peanut butter, which is a fantastic name for the color. And we're going to apply this using a stipple motion again, as you can see, just across the top and bottom of that bag as well, just to create that little bit of a vibrancy. The stipple motion on the bag is great because that will add to the overall effect of a worn down used leather. Then finally I'm just going to use a silver and with the silver then I'm just going to pick out some of the more extreme sort of highlights on the uh, the gunmetal that we used originally. A cool thing again with that Drakenhof Nightshade is that this would have dried down a little bit blue on those silver points creating sort of like a cold steel colour as well. Again very fantastic, uh, very great sort of um, colour and texture with minimal effort so it looks great but we're not having to do too much to kind of get that effect either which is fantastic that's exactly what we want so as you can see just picking out some of the areas where i think the light will be shining on the light now as a pure optional layer i am using deep purple and i'm going to use deep purple with a very 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 tip of the brush and i'm using a size zero brush for this and that's all i'm going to do with this is i'm just going to create a straight lines in a random kind of pattern just to kind of give the idea that there's a lot of veins or some of the uh, the, the sort of rotten flesh veins and, and things like that are just poking through on the side of the head here yeah. the cool thing is if you do make a mistake you can always go back to the original color and just dab that back over the top so that's not the end of the world um, it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake and so there you go, that is Mr. Axe all complete, nice and simple, a few cool new techniques and a few cool new paints to go along with it. Um, all in all, I think this has been a really cool, quick and easy, great looking little project and a great character as well to add into my uh, collection and something that I will really, really cherish when I'm playing the board game. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think of some of these techniques and how you think he's turned out in the end. All in all, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching the comments, the support, all of your kindness and of course your patience for waiting for me in between these videos. Thank you as well for putting up with my voice because my voice is kind of going a little bit uh, due to being a little bit unwell so thank you as always and i hope to see you guys on the next one